Okay, Eric here with 30 by 40 Design Workshop. Today I'm going to be doing a quick update on the studio. We have some siding up and I want to talk about the exterior wall assembly. And there's sort of two components to the exterior wall assembly that we'll talk about. One is the sort of design aspect of it, which we've been talking about all along. And the second is the sort of technical aspect. Um, so architects have to balance those two things oftentimes. I wanted to distinguish this project from the main house, which has a smaller siding detail. So the siding coursing on the main house is about five inches. The boards here, uh, this is an outbuilding, so I wanted to treat it more like a barn. And so the siding, I want to be larger, taller, um, and this is a one foot plank here. The house is a five inch plank, so it's roughly half of that. And then we have a half inch reveal here. Um, and part of the impetus for exposing the framing system and uh, you know the sort of corner detail here um, and showing how the planks work is really this idea about sort of teaching how a building goes together, really displaying explicitly all of the component um, pieces and parts that make up the exterior shell of a building. Now the technical aspects of this, um, when we talk about the wall assembly here, we're basically dividing the building between the interior conditioned space and the exterior unconditioned space. And the thing that divides that actually is the air barrier. Now in our case, we have the wall studs um, and exterior plywood sheathing. Between the wall studs, we're insulating with a closed cell soy-based spray foam. That's our air barrier. So that keeps the outside air from uh, coming in and the inside air from going out. Now, to either side of the air barrier, we want our wall assembly to dry. So on the exterior face here, uh, when it gets wet, we want it to dry to the outside. The inside face, when it gets wet inside, we need a way for that to dry as well. And we're using our mini split system to do that. That has an air conditioning sort of component to it and that draws the water, any moisture that's in that space and it pulls the condensate and we have a little drain pipe down here on the end um, that will drain it to the outside. So moving from the outside face uh, of the plywood sheathing, uh, we, on top of that, we have what's called the water resistive barrier. That's the WRB. And in our case, the black here, um, in, and you'll see in this time lapse video, is um, a 30 pound building felt. 30 pound felt has a perm rating of roughly two um, when it's dry. Now, a perm rating is how much moisture can actually move through the material. The lower the number, obviously, the better. So a vapor impermeable surface will have about a perm rating of about 0.1. Um, so two means it's more permeable. Um, and in our case, that's a good thing. The unique thing about uh, using building felt and the reason we're, why we're using it is because as the humidity increases, the perm rating also increases. And what that does is it allows it to, in a humid condition, uh, when the wall is getting wet, it allows it to soak up um, the moisture like a sponge. Then as it dries out, as the humidity level drops, the material is al allowed to dry. And we were talking about that air barrier being the separating point. We want the materials to the outside of that to be able to dry. And this WRB, the building felt the WRB, allows it to dry to the exterior face. Now, the one sort of drawback of about the 30 pound building felt is that it's not UV stable. We've had really good luck with uh, building felts being durable over long periods of time, even when exposed to UV light. That being said, around the window openings, I'm using a material called VaproShield, and that is UV stable. So I've flashed all of the corners with that um, here. Any points that I feel are really super critical, like the window and door openings, we're using the VaproShield product, and that's a self-adhering membrane. Um, now, on top of the WRB goes our vertical strapping, and you can see that sort of pattern that's happening here. The strapping in our case is just a one by two cedar material, and we can get this locally, um, and that's milled uh, up to make our verticals here, and that fastens directly into our stud, our wall framing. Now, on top of that, I talked about this hardy panel. The hardy panel, um, it comes pre-finished on the exterior face. On the back face, it is it has no finish. So what I've done is gone ahead and primed these on the back. And then um, because the hardy panel comes in a four by eight sheet, I've actually ripped it down to a one foot section. Um, and every cut joint, we wanna come back in and make sure that those get finished uh, with a paint. And we're using an exterior latex paint to do that. Hardy makes um, a special touch-up paint that we can use and the, some of the vertical seams we've used that touch-up paint there. Now those are fastened to the vertical 
strapping battens uh, with a gasketed screw, a uh, galvanized screw, and that will keep the water out of those hole penetrations. Now overall, this assembly is called a rain screen system. And uh, basically, you can think of it as a jacket. So the building has this jacket. It's keeping uh, most of the liquid water out of the face, off of the face. Um, any uh, wind-driven rain or snow that makes it through this uh, plane actually has an airspace. This vertical strapping creates a three-quarter inch airspace behind it, and that drops the vapor pressure, and the liquid water is allowed to fall down the backside of our wall assembly and drain out the bottom flashing detail. Um, there's some of the corner flashing details which I think are kind of interesting. Um, we'll go get into those in a future video. These are lead-coated copper corners. Um, but basically the whole design idea with this is to really expose how all of these elements build up and create the exterior wall assembly. So I hope this has been an informative video. Um, next couple of videos we'll look at the, some of the other exterior finishes. We have metal roofing on, our skylights are in. Uh, obviously, I said we had insulated and we're, we'll be moving inside and looking at the loft framing and uh, the concrete floor finishing, the honing of that. All right, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.